small steppers and welcome back to Being Bethany. Now, before we get into this video, please like, comment and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get notified when a new video goes live so you will not miss out. So, in today's video, we're talking how to stop people pleasing and set boundaries. Now, this is regardless of, of mental health issues that you may have. Some people, myself included, are people pleasers and there's nothing wrong with that but it can start to get unhealthy it can start to lead into mental health issues especially for me with my anxiety a big part of my anxiety is people pleasing and therefore it's something i really need to look at in order to help me from uh, an anxiety point of view but also from a life point of view as well in this video, I'm gonna be talking seven tips, seven tips on how to stop people pleasing. So what is people pleasing? Well, people pleasing is the act of saying yes to people a lot. It's where you're nourishing other people's needs before your own, and it's the difficulty to set healthy personal boundaries. Now, a boundary is a limit to what you will or will not do for someone and when you're a people pleaser you can find it really hard to say no especially as quite a lot of people pleasers will be acting from a low self-esteem and they need external validation to to boost themselves to they look for other people's approval to make themselves feel good and unfortunately as well that means that sometimes people pleasers can get taken advantage of because they want to serve people and others know this so they use them quite regularly to help them in their lives and then people pleasers realize that they they haven't necessarily helped themselves and they're also doing things that they probably want to say no to so you've got that internal conflict because you're you're saying yes to things that you might not actually stand for or might not actually believe in now I'd just like to say before we get into this video, there is no judgment if you're a people pleaser. I am a people pleaser. I have spent many, many years in the trap of trying to please people and I still want to and I still do from time to time, but it becomes unhealthy when you realise that it's because you don't have a lot of self-love for yourself and that's not right. You should always love yourself. You're awesome. I'm just putting that out there right now. Some people might ask, what is the difference between people pleasing and generosity? Well, I'd say generosity is from a healthy place where you already have quite a high self-esteem and you have genuine happiness for the shared enjoyment of, of things with other people, such as giving gifts, or, or giving a lot of your time with for someone, that's because you enjoy it as well. Whereas people pleasing comes from a, a lack of self-esteem, a need to, to impress people and have the approval of others, and can actually, like I said before, you end up doing things which you don't actually feel very good about, or you don't have the time for, but you're giving people time that you don't have. I read something actually which which gave a really good example. Like I said earlier, people pleasers will want to nourish others before themselves and it's that idea of, I think you've heard it on, on a plane, when you're on, on an aeroplane and they say that if there's something bad that happens and the oxygen mask comes down, to put your mask on first before you can help other people. Well, with people pleasers it's kind of the opposite. They make sure that someone else's mask is on and don't realise that they're affecting them in the process. I just thought that was actually a really cool metaphor to describe people pleasers. So, tip number one is self-awareness. Now, I think this goes at the beginning because self-awareness means how do you feel about something? What do you want from a situation? Is this gonna benefit you? Is this gonna hinder you? Self-awareness be means being really in touch with yourself, knowing about what you want and putting that first when you get approached with a situation. So for example, say someone at school approaches you and goes, hey, oh, could I, could I really ask you to, to help me with this assignment, perhaps, perhaps tomorrow afternoon? Now, instead of just going yes straight away, which people pleasers tend to do, you take a step back and you go, hang on a second, I, I do want to help them, that's fine, but tomorrow afternoon, I've actually 
I was going to do my assignment in that time. So it's knowing whether this saying yes to something is going to benefit you or not. And, and I really struggle with this because of my anxiety. I find it really hard to make decisions for myself and I'm really indecisive. So I've had to get better at kind of taking a step back or, or even in like moments of solitude, just going, what do, what are my values? What, what do I want to give out there? What do I want to receive? And I think the more you can check in with yourself on that, the easier it will be in those moments to know the right answer to say. So I've, I've had to get better at that. Leading on from this is number two, which is self-love or internal validation. Now what I mean by this, what I said at the beginning, people pleasers look for external validation to feel better about themselves, look for the approval of others, but you don't need that. You need self-love, you need internal validation. And if you can get better at this, it's gonna mean that you won't want to necessarily do things just to get the validation of someone else because you have it here. And that's the most important thing and this is something I'm trying to work on so much because you're enough and you, you're the best person for yourself because you're you, you are enough, I can't say it <laughs> enough. So it means building up a, a confidence within yourself to know that you stand up for yourself, you look after yourself first and foremost because that's what's most important. Yes, you don't want to be a selfish person in this world. No one does. And, and I would encourage you to be kind and to give to other people and to be generous. But in terms of people pleasing, you need to find that validation within yourself. You need to hang around with good people who won't ask anything of you apart from being yourself. You need to do things which make you feel cool and exciting and, and those small steps, you know, that those internal validations. I just did a driving lesson today. Yeah, I'm blimmin' cool. That's, that will help you with people pleasing so much. And that's something that I've had to work really hard on and I'm not all the way there yet. But as I started to come out of uni in, in the last, say, half of the year, that's what I started finding for myself. And you know what? People didn't always like it but I found it for myself and, and, and that was the most important thing. So self-love people, you are enough, you are amazing, you are cool, you are awesomeness, you are everything. So please practice that. Number three. Now, it can be really hard to say no, especially if you're a people pleaser. You might feel guilt, you might feel shame, you might feel like this person isn't gonna like you anymore because you've had to say no to something. It can be really scary. So, I'm all about the small steps, people. You're gonna, I laugh at it now because I think, are you sick of hearing that? But it's my mantra, so I'm gonna keep going. Small steps, so start with small no's. Start with small no's slash alternatives. Now, what I mean by this, let me give you some examples. So, for example, if someone asks you to a party and, and you want to make an appearance, but you don't want to be there the whole night, now, instead of saying, yes, sure, I'll be there, it'll be fantastic, what time are you coming? What time does it start? Eight, sure, I'll be there at eight. No. If you want to be there at eight, but then you might say, oh, I'll be there from eight, but I will have to go early, so I'll just let you know. Or you go a bit later, so you, you don't have to be there the whole time. So that could be a kind of alternative no. Someone might ask you to go for a dinner date and instead you change it to a coffee date because you still want to see them but you perhaps don't want the bigness of a dinner, then that's fine. Just practice saying no to littler things, alternatives. And also when you say no, say it kindly, say it gracefully. Sometimes our language is really important. Sometimes, especially if you've got people around you that you know will push, sometimes if you say, oh, I, I can't do that, sorry, then they'll be like, but why? And then you feel flustered to try and justify your actions or your boundaries. So maybe try and change that to, I don't want to go to the party, no thank you. I hope you have a really good time. Changing I can't to I don't, obviously still with grace because I don't know, hearing that one scared me a little bit because I was like, oh, that sounds quite harsh. But if you're already thinking that, you know you won't say it harshly, but I think just being mindful on, on the way that you're saying things, because sometimes you can leave yourself open to traps, and people can kind of worm themselves in and be like, oh, but go on, but why, oh, but, 
we don't have to do it for that long or we don't you know and, and sometimes you know in your core that no I don't want to do this right now number four time now what I mean by this is giving yourself a bit more time to make up your decision rather than saying yes on the spot or no on the spot because that's the trap I get myself in what I mean by time is maybe just saying to someone leave it with me let me get back to you and I'll let you know and that way you've bought yourself a bit more time to have a bit of a self-awareness reflection like we talked about in step one and you go do I actually want to do this is this going to make me feel good is it going to be rewarding am I doing this for someone who equally cares about me and then you can reply to them I don't know email text phone call yes sure I would love to do that or no sorry I don't want to do that this time just allow yourself a bit more time or even you know what in that moment just have a bit of silence silence can be really awkward but actually I've realized that it's kind of something that confident people do because they're actually just trying to check in with themselves. So for me, silence is really awkward, but I think for some people, silence is like a, a confident statement to go, right, I'm, I'll just uh, take a moment to think about this and then go for it. So, and I think with all these tips, it will get better over time. The more situations you find yourself in, the better it will be. Number five get rid of toxic people now that's quite a bold statement for me because it sounds a bit mean but i really mean it some people might start off with the best intentions and then you realize that they're just not your people and they don't want what's best for you they want what's best for them and they want what they can get out of you and they're not worth it in the end i like to really see the good in people and I think there is good in everyone, but sometimes that's just not enough. If you have toxic people in your life right now, if you realize you're doing a lot for someone and they're not giving it back and they're making you feel like the problem is you all the time, please step back. Please, please try and look at it or please get someone else who you really trust to look at that situation because no one deserves to, to feel like that and to be used no one deserves it yeah if you can get out of those situations quicker than i did then then please do number six right communication so when you have thought about the boundaries you would like to set in place maybe you would like to do some now in existing relationships or maybe you're aware of them for future ones it's, it's all about communication and expressing how you feel and expressing your truth so there are always better ways to do this and i would always encourage people to approach those boundaries with kindness to, to lay them out to someone be very clear and and not be too judgmental don't be too blamey just set it out that this is what i would like from this relationship try and communicate as best as you can how you're feeling but it's very important to note that we're also not responsible for how other people feel if you're trying to set this boundary with someone and they're trying to give you rubbish for it that's also not your responsibility you've set it out in a kind way and if they're not being nice back you're not responsible for how they're feeling to that situation number seven rewriting your story so this has been really important for me and what i mean by it is sometimes when you people please you'll have situations in your head if they haven't gone very well and you'll kind of use them to be like well don't do that again because that was really embarrassing because because i think i hurt someone's feelings there or or i didn't conduct myself in the right way and you'll kind of use those stories to beat yourself with in order for you to you know go into a situation and make sure it doesn't happen again but what's really important is to rewrite that story because actually that's a lot of pressure in the background to, to live up to and not helpful when you're trying actually to stop people pleasing as much. So what I mean is take a situation that you found maybe embarrassing, that it didn't go very well, try and find the positives from it, which can be difficult. Think about it in reality because I know from an anxious standpoint, I will blow things out of proportion and actually something which I thought was super, super embarrassing most likely people don't actually remember because you know what everyone's caught up in their own stuff quite frankly so 
So make sure you're looking at it from a realistic point of view, try and find the truth, try and find the positives, try and find the things that you can learn from the situation. A tendency when, when you people please is to be really hard on yourself and to feel a lot of guilt and shame about things and you just don't need to because quite frankly you were probably doing okay in that moment, you were just being too hard on yourself. So, I've given my seven tips, I want to drop in a couple of little reminders for you in here. So, stop apologising. Apologise when you need to. Apologise please when you've made a mistake, but don't apologise for your thoughts or your feelings or your emotions. Don't apologise for being you. Look at yourself and grow from this situation. I think it's really important as much as we can talk about toxic people and people using you, it's also important to know whether you're doing things out of generosity, whether you're doing things because you want something back from someone in terms of their approval. It's really good to look at yourself and grow from these situations and that can be really hard to do, but you know what? If you're doing that, then that's awesome, that's amazing because some people can't. Some people really can't and, and I think it's, it's really important for us all to try and work on ourselves all the time so we can spread love and positivity and kindness to people and to do that from a place of, of security and loving yourself and I just think that's really, really important. Also, stop trying to force harmony. I would be sometimes in groups of people and I just didn't like confrontation and I'd try and make sure that everyone else, right, you're okay, yeah, you're okay here, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I was tired by interactions and and you then aren't being necessarily true to yourself because you're spending so much time thinking about other people all the time. So stop trying to force harmony, let, let moments be and sometimes people are going to disagree and yes it's really hard and I hate confrontation and it's really scary but live your truth be around people who are living their truth. Yeah, don't don't try and force it because you'll run yourself ragged. You'll run yourself in little circles. And finally, I've touched on it before. Some people may react unkindly to you setting boundaries for yourself. And if that's the case, then leave those people behind because you're allowed to set boundaries for yourself. You don't have to people please in order to get validation. You've got that within yourself and if it's not working then leave the situation because some people will get so used to you people pleasing and and being at their every need at their beck and call as they say and when you're not they won't like it so hey they can decide whether they want your awesomeness still in their life or not but with some boundaries set or if they want to lose out it's up to them but know yourself, know your self-worth, love yourself and find the people that are gonna love you no matter what. So yeah, that's that's the video guys. I really enjoyed that video, I think I can say that about every video, but I did because as I'm hopefully helping you, I'm also helping myself just to remind myself these things and then hopefully, you know, if I'm if I'm growing then I can help you vice versa, circle of life, circle of love, Lion King is an epic film. Is that relevant? No, but I need to put that out there. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. If you made it this far, again, give us a little like, comment, subscribe, and I hope everyone has a great week, and I hope everyone finds their self-love within themselves, and please follow me on Instagram, and give me some updates about your small steps, tag me in them or something, and if you ever need anything, you know, please message me, and I hope you have a good week. See you soon. Bye. Well, people pleasing. That's a very good thing. <laughs>